In case you didn't think I was listening when you said use more hand tools, I'm gonna cut this out by hand. I just wanna highlight that's not because I soldered this one up on the mill and now I'm fed up of using the mill today. It's totally my choice. The first job is to square up this angle and it will give me a good opportunity to dry run with the horizontal miller before I start doing things which are really dimensionally critical. So I actually received the miller with a box of cutters and they are they're various kinds. You have uh, your uh, side and end cutters. So that's cut for cutting up to a shoulder. Um, I have some which look like slotting. I mean, there's no cl is there clearance. I don't think there's any clearance at all on these teeth. So I think this would be for cutting a slot. Uh, there are ones with strange profiles. And yeah, even more strange profiles. Uh, but I realized that uh, although these are all exciting, they all look like they're in fairly decent condition. What I wanted to do was uh, have a new cutter, which uh, I could use as a datum to work out which ones are worn and which ones aren't cutting the way I want them to and so on. So uh, I uh, decided to buy this. And I appreciate this is pretty ridiculous. It's a three inch by three inch diameter uh, Clarkson uh, slab cutter. And the, the, the main problem with this is that um, to cut that that width um, really needs a keyway to hold it in engagement with the, the arbor, and this arbor doesn't have one. Uh, so I think in retrospect it was a bit of a stupid purchase, but um, it should do just as well for, for thin stock. And I'm pretty sure I've used a 20 mil uh, milling cutter before on the horizontal mode, and this is only 20 mil in diameter. So although this is nice and wide, it'll only be cutting on a in a relatively narrow section. Okay, I want to get started on milling. I want to say a couple things really quickly. Firstly, this is a locking nut and it's reverse threaded. So if you're cutting in the direction that I'm cutting in, you need to ensure that you've spaced it from the bearing. If that locking nut comes in contact with that bearing, then the locking nut will actually unlock and it will start to unthread, uh, you know, unscrew and pull the head out this way, which is no good for anyone. I could reverse it and it would be fine, but this is just a better and more convenient way for me to be able to machine because the wall is on this side, the handle is on this side. There's lots of space here and this is where the camera's pointing. And there we can see the finish on the uh, on that part. I think that's pretty great, actually. It's uh, yeah, you can see my thumbnail on it. And what feels like several hundred years later, we have the squared up angle. Um, this seems to be purely visual. Um, you can't actually feel uh, those those lines across there. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to try some different different feeds and speeds and cutters and things and um, see if I can get that like a mirror finish. But that's, you know, there's nothing there to, to feel. Um, so the, the next step uh, was going to be to use the horizontal mill to uh, cut the slots for the frame. However, some helpful soul appears to have welded a block inside this end of the vise, which is used to um, mount the vise uh, in line with the T-slots. So I'm gonna see what I can do at trying to get this out. I might have to drill it out. Um, but in order to progress a little bit on the, uh, on the, the tender, 
I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna revert back to using the vertical head um, to trim the sides and cut the slots. Or maybe do it by hand. Definitely got to figure that one out. What you can see here are the tools I've been using to mark out the drag and buffer beams. So we've got a just a standard engineer's rule and the drawings, odd leg calipers, a magnifying glass, scriber, vernier calipers, a um, center punch and the one, two, three block and the height gauge. And it really was fairly simple. Get these to the correct height and then mark out all of the horizontal features in one fell swoop, which I've done here. Um, including the center lines and these lines here for the buffers uh, and then use the odd leg calipers to uh, scribe the longitudinal center lines and these bits here that I'm going to be cutting off. So these two holes are for buffers and this is for a coupling hook and over here we've just got a hole for the link and the pin that will hold the tender to the locomotive. Can you spot anything wrong with where this center line is? In case you didn't think I was listening when you said use more hand tools, I'm going to cut this out by hand. I just want to highlight that's not because I sorted this one up on the mill and now I'm fed up of using the mill today. It's totally my choice. And there'll be a lot more of that. I was actually hoping to finish this video with the rest of the buffer beam, but I've managed to pull my back and uh, can't actually get out of bed at the moment. So uh, I'm just going to put this video out as it is, um, but do rest assured uh, and get back on the horse as soon as possible.